Thanks for staying with us now. If you're just tuning in, is our CEO feature for the month of March, and we're discussing challenges of insurance company in Nigeria. Please let us hear what you have to say. Remember, you can join this conversation. Tweet at us at Wayshow Africa One with the hashtag Wayshow. Or send us an SMS or WhatsApp to 081 803 All right, so we have a few comments. Let's just quickly take that. Then, Jennifer, I hope you don't lose your question. Or do you want to take your question first? Yeah, let me please, just take Please, please do. <laughs> I don't want you to lose it. Okay, so my question is, um, are there risks in insurance and what are they? If I have to insure something, are there any risks that I would have to face in the future or something? Are there, you know, I, I feel like for every business model, there are pros and cons. Mm -hmm. So what are the cons? Of insurance. Are there any cons? That's an interesting Is question. Is it to you as the company or to the insurance? Both to the, the, both to the customer, to, both okay. to the the customer yeah. and the okay. company. Okay. Okay. Because okay. I, I have seen situations where the, um, <clears throat> the insurance company has to lose a lot. Mm when there is a oh, problem i think during yeah, especially during that incest period um incest time when there were lots of um claims to properties that were destroyed and all of that and the insurance companies were taking a long time to respond so i, I kind of felt like there was a problem the, the yeah, companies were being affected so take the angle of the customer and also for the business okay okay so so I guess the short answer is yes. There, there's, there's, there's nothing in life without risk, right? And I would, let me start with the customer. The, that's the most important aspect. So the risk for, an ins for a customer, insurance cu customer, is when you insure with the wrong insurance company. Mm -hmm. And by wrong insurance company, I mean an insurance company who doesn't have your best interests at heart. Because an insurance company here is, to, is here to carry the risk for you, is to hear, here to support you at your lowest point so that you can get back on the horse and go off again. And if, if that insurance company is not there for you when you need the insurance company, when you expect the insurance company to be there, when you have the right, because of course not every claim is valid, but when you have a valid claim and have the right to be paid, that's when the risk is with you, the customer. Hmm. So it's, it's beholden upon the customers, is, you know, it's always buyer beware, make sure you do your research when you choose an insurance company. Don't just go for the cheapest one. There's a reason things are cheap as we all know. Mm. So when you go for cheap, you lose value. But, but, but is this not even um, wrong image painting for your insurance company? Why can't there be a standardized, um, uh, what's it called, structure for all insurance companies? Okay, maybe a little bit of tweaks here and there, but the standard is we must adhere to these rules and regulations to be able to get... Because you're in a market where people are very skeptical. You mm -hmm. said something about trust. Mm -hmm. There's no trust already, you know. When you're coming in with insurance, I'm telling you, I'm not interested, God is my insurance, you know. So, um, because of that, the uniqueness of the, the market, especially in Nigeria, because we're mm -hmm. narrowing it down to Nigeria, mm -hmm. shouldn't there be like a structure where every insurance company holds the other insurance company accountable to ensure that whatever it is that you have penned down to say, this is what you're going to do, you do it. Shouldn't that be, you know, the standard? Yes, and, and in essence it is. You know, there, there is a sense of holding ourselves account accountable as an industry. Uh, However, it's, it's, it's sort of, we're not, we're not police. You know, I, I can say that, okay, uh, I, I, I can give you peer pressure mm. and say, okay, for the, for the customer, for the industry, for the reputation of the industry, we should all behave a certain way. We have uh, an industry uh, organization that sets certain rules. We have a regulator who sets certain rules. Mm -hmm. But for the, for, the, for the people, for the insurance companies who don't follow those rules, what can another insurance company yeah. really do to stop them, right? That, 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 that's so maybe you just market yourself more so that they don't go to that insurance company. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so let's take in some comments, Jennifer. Mm -hmm. <coughs> okay, so um, Binga from First Tax said, I still believe we need more innovation in the insurance space. Yes. I'm surprised people are more concerned about vehicles, third-party insurance than health insurance. Mm. Very valid. And there is a comment from Bello, he said, um, lifestyle insurance is what we need for the 1% to remain in a full insurance ecosystem. Hmm. <laughs> Interesting. Interesting comments. Uh, so I'll take one from Benson. Benson says, another strong barrier to many not buying insurance is largely 
um, a lack of education to a broad spectrum of people showcasing the benefits. Many are yet or not able to see the benefits. Yes, yeah, so let me give you more Very on Benzin. True. Okay. Um, he says, can insurance be defined as, crit as a critical backup? If yes, it means anyone with a strong plan must find a way to assure that it does not fail. How is the insurance company able to help the buyer appreciate this? So I guess maybe this is a question for mm. a couple of questions for Adeoli. Um, and then it says, in my opinion, what Joseph did when he interpreted the dream and stored enough harvest was strategic backup that sustained Egyptians and Israelites during the famine. Can this be termed as insurance? Yes. Without that backup, all would have perished. Well, bring in some faith in there. Mm. So, okay. Interesting. So what's the question, the second question, that how, how is insurance company able to help? Yes, so he says, can insurance be defined as a critical backup? If yes, it means anyone with a strong plan must find a way to assure that it does not fail, so that insurance doesn't fail. And then how is the insurance company able to help the buyer appreciate this? I think this is probably from a buyer awareness mm -hmm. um, point of view of yeah. insurance. Mm. So I've always been the first to say that what I love about insurance, insurance is not sexy, uh, it's not interesting. The moment I say I'm in insurance, the person starts to fall asleep. <laughs> but what, what, I, what really thrills me about insurance, particularly in this part of the world, is the, 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 the safety net. I think of insurance as a safety net. It's, it's really the, the thing standing behind, between you and bankruptcy. Mm. Because so many of us are that close to bankruptcy in this part of the world. And so you know, insurance kind of smooths out those, those low points. So that instead of just you hit a hit a bump in the road, you go down here, you hit you, you struggle to get back up, you come back down. What insurance does is that you hit that low point. Insurance keeps you sort of stable, and then you can rise back up again, get up here. Something happens again, keeps you stable. You keep rising, and so that's why insurance is such a critical piece of any good financial planning, personal financial planning, but it's also a critical piece of social planning our country. Mm. So how possible is it for us to get the country, because it may, when you mentioned country, I'm thinking if the government sees, you know, the way you have health policies abroad, health insurance abroad, I know it doesn't cover everything. I mean, mm. my friend just lost her older sister to cancer. Mm -hmm. She lives in the UK. Part of the, the reason why she, I mean, she passed was because the insurance cover for uh, um, cancer and some treatment and all of those things where of course you know there's a limit to the insurance despite oh people say oh there's NHS and all of that but there's mm. a limit to, to it but mm. at least abroad mm. the basics you mm. know that insurance covers it mm -hmm. I mean there's a friend of mine that works and she she was saying that you know they were insisting they go do um, cervical cancer check and all of those things because they would compel you yes because they know that at the end of the day they are the ones paying mm -hmm. heavily for it you know, so how can we even get the, the government, right, the system in Nigeria, okay, don't give us too much. At least give us basic um, health protection. Can we start that kind of movement in Nigeria, at least for health? I'm not sure about the other ones, but at least for health, where we're able to say, you know what, we can take up schemes for health insurance, and maybe the government can now invest in um, proper health structures, and it will be subsidized by the insurance companies and all of that. Is it possible? Anything is possible, but the, the, the huge debate is whether health insurance is better public or privatized. Yeah. And the UK believes one thing, Canada believes also that it should be a public commodity. The US believes something completely different. Yeah. I don't you know, know where I stand on, 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 on that, but I, 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 well, actually I do. I really think that you need both sides. Yeah. And, and you know, one thing that has become quite critical is what they call PPP, public-private partnerships. And, and, and so the, the benefit of public-private partnership is that it's the, the, govern, gov, the government providing the, the, the support and the infrastructure, uh, maybe around taxes, around different things, but with a private mindset. There's a different mindset when you have to make profit mm -hmm. as opposed to a sort of non-profit, yeah. um, public good kind of thing. And that discipline that the, the, the private industry brings is what I think the health industry needs, needs. in Nigeria. Mm. So th there has to be a solution in between. We can't wait for the government to build a whole public health infrastructure. There is something on the private side, so why can't the private insurance companies, so by supported by the government, 
build that infrastructure. Mm. Absolutely. All right, so Rafael Akari from Zara says, insurance is a pool of risk as we used to define it back in our secondary school days when people presently cannot even afford basic necessities of life in a mm. country then marketing insurance policy becomes a mirage and not a reality so we're still going back to this living under a dollar mm. story you know mm. which is the average nigerians um nigerians experience you know so now that we know that okay yes nigerians are actually living under a dollar and all of that uh, you mentioned something about the macro micro insurance the micro insurance, insurance you know how well is that doing you know are still are people still even able to see that this would help you in the long run let me take bima as an example and and i can use bima because alliance is a is a significant investor in bima uh, so bima is a digital micro insurer that started in ghana but now is spread all over asia and parts of latin america and in ghana we've seen with bima that 90, over 90% 90 of the customers are actually living on under $10 a day. So, that, so, so, so there's, there's a, a large portion of the population, let's say in Nigeria, it's another 40%. So we have 40% under $2 a day, and then we have another 40% between 2 and 10. And, and, and then we have the 20% and the 1%, the 1%. Mm -hmm. but, but, but if we focus on the 40% the plus the 20 so that's 60% of the society mm -hmm. that could be covered with a mixture of traditional insurances and micro-insurance. Six, and, and that's a significant part that was a significant to go from yeah. less than 1% mm -hmm. to 60% mm -hmm. of the population mm -hmm. covered. So that opportunity is there. It is definitely there. Th th this is why a company like Allianz are coming to Nigeria because the opportunity <laughs> is so vast. <laughs> so, right, so, so before I talk about the opportunity, mm -hmm. I'll just take this comment. It says a lot of people are skeptical of insurance companies, mostly because of bad experiences. I, for one, um, had a bad experience with an insurance company, as I'm yet to receive payment on a policy I had with an insurance company that matured in 2018, and that's from a light or from Abuja. Um, we see many of those, but uh, the question that I have is, again, in terms of um, growing insurance and where the future is going um, post-COVID, how do we start to, because we must admit that given everything that has happened with COVID, the insurance landscape has somehow change has been affected so mm -hmm. things that weren't um, factors before are now factors today mm -hmm. um, and and that those kinds of things keep happening even in nigeria with um the nsars protests all sorts of clauses that weren't at the forefront <laughs> all of a sudden yeah. became things that people needed to be aware of mm -hmm. um i just want to understand what technology can do because just as fintech is changing the scope in banking mm -hmm. we also have insurtech so maybe just some insights into what technology can really do to maybe make insurance more agile from the perspective of the customers technology is amazing it's amazing because it makes our life so much easier it can be very addictive but it makes our life so much easier and what I love about the time that we're living in, to, in today, if I am allowed to call it post-COVID, is that COVID acted, and this global pandemic acted as a catalyst for change. There were so many things that we talked about doing, thought about doing, planned to do, but now with, with COVID, we've been just forced, just pushed into the deep end and say, hey, everybody's working from home, the whole world is at home, and you still have to run your business. So how do you run your business in this world? And this is the new world. This is the world that people have been begging for. The, the companies who are able to adjust and adapt to this new world are the ones who will be able to succeed in the digital world. And they will use technology to do that. Whether it is the way their, their employees are working uh, uh, and, and supporting their employees working from wherever they are, whether it is the way that we use data in terms of where we went from using like personal data, uh, what your name is, when you're born, what car you're driving, et cetera, to really focusing on the entire data set and understanding customer behavior and understanding um, customer di dynamics, et cetera. Artificial intelligence. Yes. Um, not an expert, so I won't go into that topic. <laughs> <laughs> and, 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 and then also with how we target our customers, how we work with our customers, 
uh, how we reach our customers. It's no longer, please come to our branch and Broad Street and uh, sign this piece of paper and then we'll mail it to you and you'll get it a couple days later and then we'll send you your policy documents 100 pages long. But it really should be, uh, you have your phone, you type in a few details, you take your pictures, you send it into the system, three minutes later, you get your policy document, or you, you get an offer, you, you say, okay, check, I'm okay. You get your policy document, which is one page, sent to you, soft copy, and you're good to go. Mm. And this is what we need to get to. This is what we need to achieve if we really want to succeed in a new world. I can tell you that for free. Jennifer, do you have a final question? <laughs> I have one story I want to tell to wrap up. That's why they now hit my car. <laughs> you know, the sad thing about that was that just a day before, because my sister's car, because my car was in service and she loaned me her car, they had just paid, I mean, 500000 is not small money now, to insure car. They had just paid the money to the insurance company. But because the guy had not come to physically inspect mm. the car, mm -hmm right he couldn't validate that insurance this was a day before mm -hmm. the next day i was going home one drunk driver came from nowhere you know bashed my car bashed another car it was like a complete mm. messy situation I'm glad you're okay i'm good i'm happy i'm thank mm. i thank god but i'm upset mm. that because they had paid the money <laughs> so you see this innovation this mm -hmm. technology you're talking about because mm. it wasn't like they had not paid mm. they had paid they had renewed the insurance it was mm. just a day after that day mm -hmm. so how, how do you even explain this thing mm -hmm. so because of that the, the car wasn't covered you know because they did not complete the documentation mm -hmm. can't i sue that company that insurance company <laughs> Because it was not my fault now. I, I'm not a lawyer. They, they, I, I paid, they paid on Friday, so it was a Friday, and it happened on a Saturday. He was supposed to come on a Monday to inspect the car. Let me pass that over to Uti. Customer <laughs> experience. Can you see me, see me trying to buy up? Like, I think... But, but, should okay, I take sorry, this? Quick, quick, yeah, quick, 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 quick question. Well, we don't have to okay, she said... Um, it was in it was paid for a day before on friday okay on friday and, and he was supposed to come on monday for the inspection the accident happened on saturday but shouldn't he have done um the inspection before can't you payment? do video call for goodness sake no you can't do video call you have to actually inspect <laughs> the product you have to okay. inspect the item <laughs> if you're going to insure somebody's house experience. you need to check <laughs> you need to be sure. sure i mean there's a, a gap in the process there now first of all no premium no cover so you paid premium technically um you're undercover. Uh, the unfortunate part of that situation there was, yes, you hadn't done the inspection. Now, imagine it from the perspective, because like we say at Allianz, we're all business owners. You run a business. Now, you took stock, inventory, came in. Mm -hmm. You checked it, or you, rather it came in, you didn't check it. Then you get an invoice, mm -hmm. and maybe a week later, you check it, and then you start to say, oh, it's not correct, it's incorrect. You're going to, to fight for that, to say no. But the company is also going to ask you, but why didn't you check it a week ago? Mm. Anything could have happened in that time. It's the same thing. I don't want to give the impression that our dear Nigerians are interesting people. <laughs> no, we are fraudulent. Me, I know. You don't oh, need to thank tell you. Us. I will tell you. Yeah. I'm, but, I'm but, speaking on behalf of the masses. But most people, like are yourself, yes. are not fraudulent. Yes. It's not fraudulent. Yeah. But there is a process with insurance. It's the same thing with banking. There's, there's a process to everything. So if that process hadn't been completed, so right now, you've had an accident. You can tell me that you had uh, a grill that was 20 million naira, but I've never seen it. Mm. So how do I establish what you had but this so is that I can replace it? Short car. It was just a renewal. And now you're changing the game. No, no, it was not like it was fresh insurance. But even if it's it's a renewal, between the first time when it was insured they still and need to that inspect renewal, it you need to inspect That's my because so many, things, so many things could have happened You know what, not time. necessarily. Insurance matter, we can't finish it. <laughs> <laughs> when I'm telling you that I'm speaking for the masses, I know what I'm saying. Because the truth is that this is part of the... And until we're able to devise, I mean, a very innovative way going forward in the process of insurance, you know, it might continue to be a challenge for us in Africa or in Nigeria. Let me wrap up. Right, okay, wrap quickly, quickly, quickly. See, ah, we're uh, out of time. I'll say it from a customer experience mm -hmm. point of view. In any industry, in every business, there's always scope to improve your processes and optimize. This kind of situation that you've talked about has shown that there's a gap. Hmm. Should I collect money and not have done an can inspection I immediately? Can I ask for a refund quickly? No. 
Ha! That's but I was. strongly, I strongly believe he should have done the inspection before the payment was made. It doesn't even have to be before, but mm. there has to be alignment. So. Dude, let me give you the final word, please, because it's just one minute left. Okay. So it's definitely been an interesting discussion. <laughs> and what I would say is that we do need insurance. We all need insurance. There's a lot that insurance companies, us insurance companies, need to do to educate the masses yes. so that you understand your need. <laughs> and it's incumbent upon us to do that. Yeah. Thank you so much. Ways was birth. <laughs> <laughs> From the need to inform, inspire, and influence lives was action. And this year we started our CSR. I don't want to say what's on my mind. We started our CSR on curbing unemployment in Nigeria. So if you are a company, please partner with us. And if you are a job seeker, keep watching Ways and follow us on all our social media handles. But this will be an all year round engagement. So tell your friends to keep all eyes on Ways. In case you missed today's quote, there's opportunity here. The African insurance market's immaturity points to the significant scope for growth. I mean, this is the biggest market for growth. If you want to come in as an insurance company, Alliance is here. So they will grow bigger in Jesus' name. Yeah. <laughs> we'll see you live tomorrow at 8 p.m. as we bring another great conversation to your screen. Enjoy.